Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Well, how are you doing? Today's episode is going to be different. As you know, I am Lisa Bubari, your expert hypnotherapist, stress management consultant. I was, uh, uh, I was connected a few days ago. Actually, one was last month and the other one was just a few days ago about helping someone cope with the loss of their dog. And not that that I'm expert in it, it's just because so many have known that I have had many dogs and the last three I had to put them down, uh, they died. Uh, The last two I had to put them down and one of them uh, died because of an accident. Actually, it was not an accident, it was due to coyotes getting him. But the reason I am here is, hi Silva John, hi Chris, I want to talk about how we grieve, how each and every one of us grieve differently. There's people who grieve um, wholeheartedly and it becomes so devastating for them for the loss of a, a dog or a cat. Why? Because it becomes a part of their life. It is part of their family. Hi, Mark. How are you? Um, If you have had a pet in your life, you understand what I'm talking about. Uh, There are people who are not dog people or cat people. And in a way, they don't have the same connection with their animal family than those who do. So there's people who lose a family member and they don't grieve and cry as much as someone else does. So is there a right way? No. Is there a wrong way? No, because we're each, we are each different human beings. We're so different in how we react to things, to trauma, to anxiety, to stress, to loss. So last night, about 12.30 in the morning, I got a message Um, as to uh, you're the only person I know that can help me and can you guide me of what I do because I'm devastated. Well, devastation and feeling that kind of a devastation and loss is, uh, is so valid. I want every single person who has experienced a loss of a pet to know that their feelings are valid. They are not exaggerating. Why? Because our pets uh, are are part of the family. They see everything. They hear everything. Actually, dogs are more observant than anyone else in the house because they're constantly watching. They're watching every step. They're watching every move. They know our emotions, what's happening inside. It's like there's this oneness of a connection. And yes, some may say that cats are the same, but today we want to talk about how we cope with the loss. Um, When I was a young kid, uh, well, not a kid, but when I was in high school, I had a poodle and I used to live up on the hills with my parents. I opened the door one morning for him to go and pee outside and because we're in the hills we're in the territory of coyotes and the dog went outside i turned around to pick something up and he went across the street and at that same moment it was like six o'clock in the mornings two coyotes got him small little poodle and it was devastating because i heard his screams now there was nothing Worse than when you see something, when you hear it, and it sticks. It sticks in our mind. It sticks in our memory. And this is why I say muscle has memory. So every traumatic thing that happens in our life or every joyful thing that happens in our life, we bank it. We bank it into memory. So the sound of his 
screen stayed with me for a few days. And day in, day night, I could not function except to think of that sound. Eventually, it wore off. Eventually, it went away. And I recovered by healing through it and understanding that, you know, there is nothing I could have done. Because by the time I picked up the phone and I called the animal shelter, they told me, you know what, that little dog could not fight coyotes. And that is nature and that is reality. So once I accepted the reality, I understood, yes, it, could, it, it, it was my fault because I blamed myself. And that is one of the biggest things when, when something happens when someone falls or something devastating happens and you come to blame yourself, that feeling of guilt inside is worse than the reality of what happened. So we go suffer, we suffer through holding on to that blame and guilt and we hold ourselves accountable and responsible for what happened there. Yes, there are accidents. Yes, should have been more careful. And but as a as a person who he used to go and pee right in front of the door, I could not control. So I was devastated. Now let's do this forward. Come timeline forward in life. I only rescue. I rescued this incredible dog. It was for my birthday. And Toby was with me for 13 years. And he went through uh, kidney failure. He went through all kinds of infections and everything until he could no longer uh, deal with it. And this is about, what, six, seven years ago? Probably seven, eight years ago? Seven years ago that it was right before my event and we were all gathered here the committee was here we were putting everything together and he started spinning backwards and he was with us the entire time because i bring my dog to work and when that happened after everyone left my friend uh liz i love her dearly she accompanied me to go and take him to the vet by the time we took him to the emergency, he had already collapsed and I had no other recourse but to put him down. So was it easy? No. So why am I talking about it? Because as human beings, we must take responsibility of making decisions that are difficult. Decisions that may be very hard and traumatic. And yet it is the right decision because that is the reality. I did not want my dog to suffer any further, any more than what he was already going through. So making that decision and having him go in my arms was absolutely hard, especially when I learned, I don't know if you've ever put a dog down or a cat down or an animal down, especially I didn't know that dogs go with their eyes open. It's just, it, it was just as if he was still there, but not. So how do we overcome all that is to know that we lived a life with them absolutely with joy and difficulties and tantrums and hardships. But we had the best time. And they gave us so much love. And you and I take care of them. We love them. We play with them. Yeah. We did everything possible. And when we know we've done the best possible the best of our ability and that in itself has to be good enough you see when we're not neglecting when we're not hurting someone and it doesn't matter if it is especially now these children so precious animals 
teenagers, precious, seniors, precious, adults, precious. It doesn't matter as long as it's a living, breathing person or animal. The love that we give, the love that we receive is far greater than anything else. So if you have experience having a baby pause with pause, a four-legged baby, just go, share with me. Let me know, how did you cope if you have had a loss? How did you cope with it? Hi, Rubik John. Hi, Norbert. We're talking about loss of uh, loss of not only a family member, but our four-legged paws and loved ones that are animals. At this very moment, I have a few few suggestions. One one of the things that I said was, I want you to know uh, that your grief is valid. And some people have a different way of functioning and understanding the depth of a pain. But it's okay. It's your pain. It's your reality. Um, stop comparing your loss to someone else. Stop comparing the way you cope with it with someone else. Everyone copes with loss differently, either a loss of family or a loss of animals. Uh, the last dog that I had, Bodhi, he was with me when I adopted him. I rescued him. He was with me. They told me he's only four years old, but he was about six. And he was with me for about over four and a half years. And he was like my soulmate. And each one becomes your soulmate because I truly believe we don't pick our dogs or cats. They pick us. They choose us. And there is a philosophy in the Asian philosophy of Tao Ching, or is it the Chinese, that even children pick their parents. Hmm, what a concept, right? They choose the parents they want to come through. And the spirit makes that decision because they choose. This is the mother. This is the father. This is the life I want to experience. And it doesn't matter if it is good, bad, right, wrong. That is the experience they want to go through this lifetime. Now, for Christians who believe this is the only lifetime may not be so valid. And it, but I know for a fact our dogs and cats choose us. And we pick them up. So realize that your guilt is just irrational. In nature and it's normal part of any kind of a ber uh, bereavement process and we all have a different way of coping skills so to cope with something like that is number one talk about it express it express it versus suppressing it call someone who's been through it and I thank some of the people who uh, feel comfortable enough and genuinely believe that I can help them because I'm there for them. You can pick up the phone or message me or text me and I will stand by you and walk you through. And if I could, I would hug you. But again, my pain is different than yours. And whatever we are going through, it is temporary. So I have a friend of mine that they had to put their dog down, and she said, no way. There is no way I can bring another dog. I cannot go through this. So let me share something. I, when I had to put Bodhi down, it was the hardest thing. At 3 o'clock in the morning, I went to the vet. It was, I was all by myself sitting there, and I was there for almost three hours. And he was not having a, a easy time breathing. He was in oxygen. And no matter what they did, it, it, they could not, it's not that they couldn't resuscitate, resuscitate him because he was breathing, just not, could not breathe on his own. So they had him in this oxygen tank. And I was outside sitting, waiting, and there was, one of the things I can say when we are sitting waiting, we think about the worst, we 
cry because we remember everything and that is okay that is okay they know it the employees know what you're going through and it's okay whatever it is that you feel because this is how we express. Some people think about the joys, uh, their toys, the good times. There's times that we think and we hold on to and we cry. And there's times that we have to be strong. But there is nothing more important than for you to know every way you grieve is the right way for you and let no one tell you that stop it it's just an animal stop it it's just a cat or a dog or even a mouse or a rat it doesn't matter so when we go through that i want you to remember everything that you feel is about love it's your love it's their love every feeling is precious so at that three o'clock in the morning i had to make that difficult decision and i just sat there but before i did i said i have to see him and when i saw him in the oxygen tank that he couldn't hardly even breathe in there i said okay i made that decision at three o'clock in the morning to say goodbye to put him at ease because it's not about me it's about the ease of the dog ease of the animal so for the longest time my mom and I decided no no more no more animals and I just with all the difficulties with all the training and everything and having no time and I am busy my mom do you want it she can't walk uh, the dog or anything we decided okay no more until something inside me said you are ready and you know we know when we are ready we know when we say no more and whichever decision that you make that's the right one so two months ago I I started looking actually three months ago I started going to animal shelters I started looking I called a rescue person and we got to to the point that I started seeing and visiting some dogs even the shelter in Pasadena and I saw this one beautiful picture of a rescue dog who had just had a litter of seven and I just could not take my eyes off of this one dog and by the time I went to see the dog I turn around and this dog comes straight to my leg and I pick him up and he was already spoken for they were going to come that afternoon but because they didn't have the money in and this one just came running to me this little itty bitty thing i'm sure you've seen his pictures i looked at him and this small fluff bug i picked him up and i said hello winston why winston i don't know maybe because it was the grandest name I could give this small little fluff of a love bug and it reminded me of Winston Churchill never give up never give up never give up so if you are a animal lover a pet owner kudos to you there is nothing more loving to come to a home to open a door and you have this wagging tail running towards you and greeting you and just spinning all over because they are happy because that's what life is all about it's about bringing joy to your spirit is bringing joy to your home it's bringing joy to the world and when you love and care for them 
you feed them, you play with them, you bring joy to them. So in life, this is what joy is. This is what love is. And that's why seniors who don't have anyone or feel alone, the best thing is having a cat in their lap so they can just stroke and be connected. The kinesthetic, the touch, being hugged and just playing, it reminds us that we have this light spirit, this childlike personality of ours comes up. It's not that we are children, but we are childlike, not childish, childlike. We all have the child within us. We all want to play, to be nourished, to be taken care of, to be accepted and appreciated. And there is nothing far greater than for those who have children. Yes, God bless your children and your home. But that's what pie and little children do for us. So for those of you who have lost a pet, may their spirit, little pie spirits, watch over you and remind you that they're watching over us as much our family members do. In a way, their loving spirit is always around and they send the right ones to come to us. Uh, this little one, I was not expecting ever, ever to have a puppy because I hadn't had a puppy since I was a child. But this little one has brought more joy. And I want to accept and appreciate. I want you to accept and appreciate yourself and recognize if you even feed a bird and give that helping hand, you are giving, you are saying, here is my appreciation. Here is a helping hand. Here I give. And believe it or not, even birds pass it on. They keep coming. Even in our terrace, we put the bird seeds. Birds flock. How do they know there are seeds over there? They go and bring their friends. They notify their friends. I mean, I can sit in the balcony every single morning. I'm having my cup of coffee. And there's about 30 of them that come flocking over there. And nowadays, we even have crows coming. So, yes, it's all about our energy. When you expand your um mind and open your heart you bring more loving energy towards yourself so please share hi mark it says truth hearts thank you thank you for the hearts thank you for being here if you are present as i see mark is making comments thank you for being here um thank you just put number one and if it's a repeat if you resonate with this message by all means, just let me know if you're watching this repeat and if this makes any sense. So today I'm going to do something different. Um, I'm gonna light a candle. Right, like uh, lighting a candle in the name of all our pets and all the ones that we have shared time with, years with, days with, it doesn't matter. They all come to us for a good reason. So I like to call it, I evoked it and I embraced it. And then I evolved by having each one that taught me. They each taught me something about myself and they brought more joy. May God bless you and surround you with universal light. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you, Mark, for sharing. You are absolutely wonderful. You see, uh, they picked 
us for a good reason. And today, I want you to be very proud of yourself for all of you who has been a parent in, in real life to children and a parent and caretaker for the four-legged ones. Until I see you next week, I bid you goodbye. May you be surrounded with light. Bye-bye. This is Lisa Kupari. Share. Sure.